Uh, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the VP Toolkit plugin uh, stage widget. I'm going to go through all of the settings, including the location marker system. And on this episode, stage widget, VP Toolkit. All right, so uh, you'll see that I have a virtual background behind me that is currently rendering uh, on this machine and in a multi-user session. Sure, if you're not up to this point yet, you should probably go back to the other videos and watch them. Uh, but if you're here and you understand what I'm talking about, let's just keep going. Okay, so I'm going to run the panels here. Uh, as you can see, I get two content browsers. This one I generally keep on the VP Toolkit content, and then this one I just use for whatever. Sometimes they go all over the place. Uh, so if you go to your folder here and you go to VP Toolkit Concept Kit, and then you go to Widgets, and then Stage, and then Run Your Stage Widget. Now when this comes out, uh, when the, you originally fire this up, if this is your first time, it will show up uh, floating here. I generally like to dock it to the side of the uh, viewport here. I'm going to do the same thing for the Frustum camera widget. And this is how I like to have them set up. Uh, you can put them wherever you see fit, wherever works for your workflow. Uh, so I'm going to start with the VP Toolkit stage widget, starting at uh, the quick keys here. So up top, these keys are, or, or these buttons are designed to uh, make a faster workflow when you're working with this system. So if you need to quickly get to your Frustum camera to change any type of settings, uh, you this will, whatever you have determined in your VP Toolkit settings as your current Frustum camera, it will select that. You'll, you'll be surprised how much uh, that comes in handy when you have to quickly adjust settings. Uh, and then this little chair here will select the BP in-camera stage pawn. So this is what we generally use to move around our stage. Uh, I can show you real quick. You can see the background moving behind me. Uh, so it, it helps a lot to be able to get to that quickly if you have a lot of assets in your level. Uh, and then this also has your warp mapping in it. Uh, and then the reflections view actor. So right now what you're seeing behind me is just the reflections view of this scene. Once we get into the, the Frustum uh, panel, widget, I will show you what the inner frustum looks like. I'll, I'll show you how to turn it on and off. Uh, but so this reflection view controls outside of the frustum. If you see, I should be able to move that around. It slightly changes our perspective. I'm going to command Z because I had that measured to my exact height of my camera. Uh, this stage is set up for what we're doing here. So you can see my screen is behind me. And then uh, this is the view from the camera, slightly off to the side, uh, just like we have here. And then I've staged some assets, uh, some actors around here. Uh, took a second to sit down and do that before this video. So, But this is basically just the level that I had migrated from uh, some type of asset pack and this is uh, migrated into a uh, in-camera VFX template. All right, uh, so next is the menu button. This will just take you to the VP Toolkit settings actor. Uh, there's, once we get into all different types of workflow stuff, we'll, we'll use uh, some of the, the, the options in here. But for right now, we just need to make sure that uh, some of these settings are correct. Uh, we're going to want to make sure that the it's on. Uh, you can turn off setup tracker uh, until you get into using the setup tracker. Uh, you want to make sure that your in-camera stage pawn is selected, frosting camera is selected, 
uh, your mesh is selected and then for other parts of this workflow uh, like the setup panel we'll get further into uh, this type of stuff the end display options uh, so next going down the panel is the joystick uh, the joystick is kind of a prototype uh, idea that I've been playing with of making it so that you can control your stage uh, via a joystick right in editor it comes in handy sometimes but it may not work for your workflow if you want to play around with it and you like it definitely use it but uh, you don't have to uh, so you can see if I move the if I move it around you'll see my background move it only moves once you've let let go and then uh, this will move us up and down And uh, these are, uh, so the actual icon itself is a lock button. So with this controller, you have uh, basic movement transform, which is going to be uh, left, right, forward, backwards. Uh, and then you have rotation. So if we uh, lock rotation, we'll only be able to move uh, in X, Y, and uh, X and Y axis with this controller. And then if we uh, lock the rotation, I mean lock the transform uh, general move, it will only rotate. Let's see if we can get us back here. And then the numbers next to it are the rate that it rotates or moves at. Uh, makes it so you can really kind of like if you want to just very slowly move your stage you can put this to point one lock the transform and then just really small increments uh, move your stage around so this joystick panel only works currently for this version while I'm making this video in the in-camera VFX project uh, template I may be releasing a patch to get it to work in any project but for right now while I'm making this video full warning that may not work in some projects uh, but it's extremely useful if you get used to using it let me get my position back okay that is close enough for me uh, so then down here, you have a stage lock, which uh, makes it so that none of these uh, controls do anything, uh, just in case you do use this system. And then you want to make sure that nobody moves once you've set a position. Uh, and then the next is the, the control actor select. So this will actually uh, grab this. So this will actually give you the same controls but for uh, any selected actor uh, right now with the current version of the concept kit this doesn't work over multi-user so oh that aspect of it does but i don't think the okay yeah so the up and down does not work over multi-user uh, but the other one does the other the first joystick chair back and then deselect that and you'll see it goes dark and then the controls will then move the uh, in-camera stage pawn again the next button here is uh, this is a pilot selected actor uh, so if you want to quickly I use it often for the reflections view actor if you want to quickly pilot that and change what the view into your virtual uh, world would be into your render and then if you hit it again you will eject out that can be really useful also for moving cameras around or placing cameras I can even show you once we get into the frustum camera uh, that easily just piloting that actor can make it so that you can jump into a camera place it to where you want it to be and then just jump right back out of it so I'm going to uh, 
hide the screen screen plane so that we don't see it. And then if I click on this actor, you can see its view. Now, if I wanted to place this, this would could be used for uh, like temporary uh, previs uh, placing cameras. I can then move it around. Maybe I want it here. I want it there. And then if I hit eject, I'll be back out. Now, for warning, when you use it with cameras right now, it will take the field of view of that camera. So if you go to this drop down, you'll see it's at 43 for some reason should be at 50. And then we'll put this back to 90. Uh, so you can just manually eject and you won't have that issue. Uh, but if you do, that's how you fix it. We're going to, we're going to get into the location marker system. Uh, so let's say we are on a production and everybody's very happy with where everything is at, what it looks like, the exposure, uh, everything. We're like, we kind of want to lock in this position. So the location marker system is designed to give you the ability to, uh, recall locations and camera settings of at any given time. Uh, so I'm just going to name this location one beach, uh, location one beach window. And then this is shot one a window and then we'll notes I'll say my camera is at f2.8 this is my real camera I'm going to put notes for uh, so my camera is at f2.8 with a 30 millimeter lens now when I drop that when I when I hit this button here add location marker that will drop a location marker blueprint actor into the scene and then you'll see your uh, your information displayed above it here uh, so now let's I'm gonna just control the stage a little bit here I'm actually gonna do it manually so now you'd be looking for maybe the next shot of your sequence. Okay. So I like that shot behind me. I actually kind of like it more than the original shot we had. Uh, so we're going to say location two. Uh, this is looking down beach. Oh, it goes over. And then this is, let's just say that this is 1B. And then I'm going to leave the 1B down beach. And then same camera settings. Uh, so now what I'm going to do for this one, though, is I'm going to... Uh, I'm also going to drop a reference to where my camera is. Uh, so if you're using LiveLink inside Editor uh, to have a live camera feed working with this system, which I'm going to be showing you uh, in my next couple videos... Uh, you can enable uh, the reference camera here and then when you drop a location marker it will include a reference camera as to where your frustum camera was at that time uh, that makes it so every location marker that you hit you'll be able to scroll down them and see where your frustum camera was at that time so if you have multiple shots let's say uh, you're using this one location for uh, multiple different angles. You move your frustum camera. This would be live, uh, I would say. 
And then you go, okay, now we drop another one. This is one C because we're able to get that without moving the stage. And then you can drop that. So now we can go from one C to one B and see the reference uh, in the viewport here. And then you can render those out as high resolution images or whatever you need to for previs or for uh, shots on the day or approval by client or whatever you're, whatever you have to do with the workflow. Okay, so now that we've dropped that location, uh, I'm going to show you how to load up the other location. So I'm going to deselect the include reference. doesn't really matter when you're loading locations. So I'm going to go back to my first window. And if you click on this actor, you can see uh, you have your marker information here, which you can change if you'd like. Uh, so you have camera notes that you can add in, uh, and it will live within this actor. Uh, you have, uh, this is all of your camera settings. Uh, so if you wanted to change a setting without loading it up or doing anything like that, or uh, something that you may have to do in the future, you can adjust it here. Now this will not adjust any reference camera connected to it. You would have to adjust that manually. Uh, so once the LCM blueprint actor is selected, I can hit this icon here, which is load location marker. And then you'll see my stage should snap back to normal. Uh, sometimes it has a little bit of issues coming over multi-user. If this happens, just select your stage pawn and move it a tiny bit. And it will go over multi-user. Sometimes also hitting save uh, as well will work. Just hitting save current. It will push those settings over uh, multi-user for you. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe. And if you'd like, go to vp-toolkit.com to get more information and find more resources on in-camera VFX workflows.